Carbohydrate molecules contain many alcohol groups as well as a carbonyl group. And this implies that under the proper conditions, carbohydrates can undergo oxidation reactions. Now, generally speaking, there are two types of conditions that we can use. We have mild conditions as well as vigorous conditions or harsh conditions. In this lecture, we're going to focus only on the mild conditions. So under mild oxidizing conditions, the aldehyde group of any acyclic sugar molecule can be transformed into a carboxylic acid group. And the most common type of reagent that is used is bromine in water. Basically, if we take the following sugar, let's suppose D-glucose, a very common sugar, notice that the D-glucose must be in the open chain. It must be in the acyclic form. If we place bromine in water into our mixture with D-glucose, we produce our product. Now, the general uh, word that describes the product that is produced under mild oxidizing conditions is aldonic acid. But in this specific case, if we use D-glucose, it's called D-gluconic acid. Now, the question is, what exactly is the reaction mechanism by which this oxidized oxidation reaction takes place under mild oxidizing conditions? So basically, as in most oxidation reactions, we have the transformation of a poor leaving group into a good leaving group. And this reaction is no different. The main purpose is to create a good leaving group so that our carboxylic acid group can actually form. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at our reaction mechanism. So let's begin with our open chain, our acyclic D-glucose as shown in this section. So we mix it with water and the water basically acts to protonate this oxygen to form a resin stabilized intermediate where we have a positive charge that is delocalized among this oxygen and this carbon. In step number two, the hydroxide side molecule that is formed in step number one when water is deprotonated acts as a nucleophile attacks the carbon of the carbonyl displacing the pi bond placing it onto this oxygen forming this intermediate which is basically known as the hydrate so this is the hydrate with respect to this molecule our d-glucose so this is the hydrate d-glucose now, in step three and step four, the entire premise of these two steps is to basically transform a poor leaving group, which is basically our H, into a good leaving group, our bromide. So in step three to step four, this atom here is replaced with our bromide. And this H is a poor leaving group, but this BR is a much better leaving group. So in step three, we basically have the bromine and our oxygen reacts. This acts nucleophilically, attacking this bromide, displacing this second bromide to form a bond between the oxygen and our bromide, placing a positive charge on this oxygen. Now, whenever we have a positive charge on an electronegative atom such as our oxygen, that is not a very stabilizing phenomenon. So that means in step four, we're going to want to remove that charge. And the way that we remove it is a water molecule approaches and grabs this H atom, removes it to form this intermediate known as the hypobromide. So the entire purpose of forming hyperbromide bromide is to transform a poor leaving group, this H, into a good leaving group, this bromide. And this is exactly what allows us to form our D-gluconic acid, this carboxylic group on this section of our molecule in the final step in step five. So in step five, a water molecule basically deprotonates this H atom off of our carbon number one. 
where this is carbon number one here, this is carbon number one here, and this is carbon number one here. So the oxygen deprotonates this H atom at the same time breaking this bond. This bond forms a pi bond here, and that is able to kick off the good leaving group in this area here. If we tried it with this, the H is not a very good leaving group, and so this reaction would not have taken place if we had the H. But since we replaced the H with this good leaving group now, this reaction readily takes place, and we form the carbon-oxygen double bond, and we also have this hydroxyl group. So this is basically our carboxylic acid section of our product and the product is our degluconic acid and more generally known as aldonic acid. So we see that under mild conditions when we use bromine in water we basically transform only the aldehyde group into our carboxylic acid. But if we would have used some other type of condition, a more vigorous condition, not only could we actually oxidize this aldehyde, we could also oxidize this primary alcohol on the bottom.